Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and this is Crash Course in Maya, UV Unwrap version 2011 series, section 5, Nick Laid in the UVs. In this video I'm going to discuss some basic display options, how to uh, detach UVs from one another, how to reattach them, and how to use your perfectly lined up and created UV map to something you can work on in any uh, image manipulation software such as Photoshop, Crawl Painter, anything of the sort, to create the UVs that you want. Uh, There's a lot to cover so let's get started. First, I want to talk about the uh, UV, uh, some display options. So, window, I'm going to go to UV Texture Editor. Um, sometimes you actually want to see the uh, texture behind here. So, you can actually start moving and manipulating the, uh, the UVs to fit that texture, such as one of the uh, guidelines for breaking the rules. And that option is that button right here display image on and off. That is also additionally uh, located in images, display image. However, some texture maps are just a little too bright, so you're having a difficult time seeing your UVs. There's a dimming option, which is right beneath that, which is right there, dim options. What it does it creates an opa uh, opacity black over the uh, texture, makes it a little bit darker, and for your UVs to stick out a little bit better. And additionally, image, dim, dim image is where it's also located. Sometimes it doesn't fit, uh, it doesn't work all the way, so another option is to actually colorize your UVs to the faces. That is located at this button right here, toggle shaded UV display. That is also located in the images, shade UVs. Additionally, there is an option window. What if you don't like blue? Bam, you can change blue. If you want it to be more solid, you can change the, uh, the alpha. In addition, there's a back face color, which I'll explain shortly. And you can also change the opacity of the back face color, um, alpha. So what is back face alpha? Well, if you have a UV that's turned around, such as this, you'll notice that the colors turn from blue to uh, red. So you can also see that, if I uh, zoom in very closely, you'll notice that the uh, it is a little bit more um, transparent here versus here. That means there are two faces lining up here versus one here. Uh, this method is actually very useful for, uh, for pointing out UVs that are overlapping each other and are inverted. So, what, what do I mean by that? Well, well I'll show you an example. It's purple, so red and blue equal purple if you know basic colors. And that face is, well, let's find that face. Ah, there it is, right there. That is overlapping and it is right there. So, there's, uh, you can see that color, very same. Very, actually, let me hide that grid for you so you can see it easier. You can see that though uh, the overmapped UVs look nicer, easier to work with, but it's just the same thing. So, keep it on that. On undo, get everything very basic. I'm going to keep this turned down so you can see my UVs a little bit better. Now I'm going to start cutting up this uh, this bad boy. How to cut it up is I want to is going to be polygons. I want to pop out this window. The tools I'm discussing are cut UV edges, split UVs, split UV edges, move and sew UV edges, uh, and merge UVs. I'm not going to talk about uh, deleting UVs because I do not believe in deleting UVs is going to actually solve very many problems. As a matter of fact. Uh, I work additively, not subtractively. Therefore, I actually add edges instead of subtracting edges. No, that's just my work style. Anyway, uh, I digress. So, cut UV edges. What this does is you select the edge, you uh, select cut UV edges, and it will detach the UVs from one another, creating an entirely separate shell. So, when I select UV shell, select on this, bam, you got that. So, it separates the UVs from other connected UVs from the edges selection. Alternately, you have at split UVs. Instead of the edges, you're going to select on your UVs, and you want to split UVs, it's going to split the UVs from that entire thing. So, therefore, this, which is located right here, will have three UVs, which is obvious right there. Therefore, when I select a single UV, go to the Move tool and move it around, you'll notice the uh, UV is detached. Sew edges. What sewing edges is does is it uh, with your U selected UVs is going to try to make all UVs into one UV. Therefore, since this has three UVs, I push sew UVs, and if you look here, there's one, two, three, and I want to confirm with this three. It's going to try to uh, merge all three of those as best as possible without moving the UV shells, which looks like that. Looks like a giant mess. There's going to be a heavy distortion. It might actually destroy your entire unwrap altogether. Now. Move and sew UV edges. What this will do is it'll actually move your shells as best as possible 
in addition to so UV. So I have this edge selected. And what's going to happen is since these two are actually uh, separate shells, I select this. It's going to try to sew the UVs as well as move the shells like that. Everything is still basically the same. It just moved my shells around. Now, the, uh, the method I use, because when I move a UV shell to its location, I want it to stay there, is I actually use the merge UVs. This is like the mer uh, merge vertices tool. It has a threshold, as you can see. The higher the threshold, the uh, more it's going to try to work with. So if I select the single UV, select merge, nothing's going to happen. However, if I select both these UVs and they're close enough together, which I'll scale in, merge is going to go from 2, which you can see right here, to 1. So I'm going to do that in all of them. 2, 1, scale it in, merge, scale it in, merge. So now that I completely uh, just destroyed and then reattached everything, I'm going to align everything by going to move. I want to hold X, which is snap to grid, if you did not know. I'm going to move down, it's going to snap to the grid. Now be careful with this because if you go on the uh, the red axis, you'll notice that snaps to the edge and merges everything together. So be careful what we have selected. Very similar to the align tool. So I want to have this snap to edge, which is right about there. Snap to edge, uh, right about there. That's good. Snap to. I'm going to have it snap to here. So align to the left. Align to the left. Uh, so that's basically where I started off. So. Now that I have this perfect UV, I love it, I want nothing to change. Now how am I going to work with this UV to create my texture? Well, this is where UV Snapshot comes in, which is located under Polygons, UV Snapshot, or Subdivisions, UV Snapshot, depending on what type you're working with. I generally work with Polygons, so I work with Polygon, UV Snapshot. Make sure you have the object, not sub-object, selected, so you might make sure you're in object mode. Polygons, UV Snapshot, and that'll bring up this nice little option box. Pretty simple. Uh, file name, which is where you want to save. In this case, I'm going to have it on my desktop um, crash course in my unwrap folder. I want to have it right here. I want to save the file as unwrapped cube. The size 256 by 256 because uh, CPUs work better with powers of two. So I want to work with 512. That's 512 and 512. Keep aspect ratio. You want to keep everything square because the 0 1 space by default is obviously a square object. So keep aspect ratio. Keep these two the same as best as possible. Anti alias lines. If you actually have like a curve in the line, like a circle, you want to uh, make sure that's selected. In this case, because everything is kind of square, you don't need that. Color value is going to be what color your UVs are going to be versus the background, which is going to be black. Image format. My IFF. You want to make sure you want to change this to something your so your uh, image manipulation software can work with. I'll just put JPEG because that's very uniform. UV range, normal 0, 1. As for one of the rules, keep everything in the 0, 1 space. However, you can actually work outside the 0, 1 space and save it outward. So you can actually go to the entire range, so it'll actually try to export everything as possible. Or if you want to have user specified, you can actually say where the 0, 1 space is going to be, the minimum, the maximum, and all that jazz. In this case, normal one user one space will suffice. So, have my location, have my size, aspect ratio, have my file format, user one space. Okay. I know it worked two ways. If you look under the results right here, slash slash, which is general, uh, you know, scripting for comment, saved file, and the general location. The location is right uh, here, and there it is. There's my map. Now I'm going to import this into Photoshop, which I'll just do it cheaply. I have Photoshop open. Here's my map. Just click and drag, and obviously, there it is. And now I can draw to my heart's content. Oh, yay. I want to make it a little bit blue. Just draw a nice line right there. I'm going to save it out as a texture. T. Ha ha. JPEG. Yeah, that's fine. Options are fine. Minimize that. I'm going to go back to the hypershade. Go to textures. I'm going to override the uh, UV texture editor or uh, the UV checkerboard. Go to my file. There's haha. -ha. Left click drag. Minimize that window again. Haha -ha is now imported as a texture. Put Lambert 2 in my uh, workspace. 
make haha -ha by minimal dragging to the color and you'll see haha -ha has overridden uh, the UV checker tester and actually created the entire object parts of my uh, well you can see it basically created that texture so that is it for this series of videos thank you very much for watching if you have any comments suggestions problems errors bugs or if you think you have an idea for a um, a tutorial series for me to make for you. Please feel free to leave a comment or email me at the site. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope this was very informative for you. Have fun.